It's just before dawn. The night was cool, and the marabou storks have only one thing in mind, to take a foot bath in the warm waters of Lake Elmentaita. The lake is fed by hot springs and is popular with local residents, too. Josfat Ehungu has been coming here every morning for almost 20 years. He says it makes him feel reborn. When I'm in the water, I feel fantastic. I feel much better. My body is strong. Right next door is Hell's Gate, a national park with the now extinct volcano Okaria. Since the 1980s, hot steam produced three kilometers below the surface has been pumped to the surface to generate power. Ernst Mabwa heads up a new power plant here called Okaria 3. It was completed at the end of 2008 and is Africa's first privately owned geothermal power plant. The geothermal resource in uh, this area is estimated at between um, uh, 3,500 to 4,500 megawatts. The consumption of power in the country is uh, currently at a maximum of 1,180 megawatts. Therefore, if we actually are able to re develop the geothermal resource to produce electricity, we would then be able to provide more than enough for the country. But to do so, billions of euros would have to be invested to build dozens of such power plants. Foreign investors help finance this plant. This is clean energy, clean renewable energy. Um, the resource itself identified, drilled and extracted from the ground after we have used and extracted heat from it, we re-inject the wastewater back into the ground and thereby make sure that, in general, the um, only thing we extract is the heat content from the resource. The Kenyan government has committed itself to buying the electricity at a fixed price for the next 20 years. The company running the power plant is, in turn, obliged to respect the wild animals in the national park. The company must ensure that neither power lines nor pipes hinder the movements of African buffalo, gazelles, or zebras. Kenya's neighbors also have geothermal energy. So could Okaria 3 soon provide a model for all of East Africa? We've come to Nairobi, Kenya's capital. Kenya is the region's most developed country, but only a fifth of the population has electricity. What would it mean for the country and its economy if the supply of energy improved? Cheryl D'Souza, a Kenyan of Indian descent, heads one of the country's most modern printing companies with a turnover of around a million euros a year. She says the power supply has become much more reliable in the last six months. And she has news for people who don't expect to find high-tech equipment like this digital printer here in Nairobi. That is a, an overseas perception. And I mean, we've come across it many times when we go for exhibitions. We find people thinking, you come from Africa, are you sure? First of all, they don't even believe you have power or electricity in your house. I mean, the, m most people don't even think they're, they're buildings, they're solid buildings in Kenya because most of our documentaries, they show you wildlife and the rural setting. So when you try and explain to them you live in a normal city like everybody else, they don't believe you. And it's, it's quite funny, but then when they visit, like when the technicians visit, they're quite surprised. But this too oh. is part of life in Kenya. <laughs> Power outages. Sometimes electricity supplies are interrupted for hours, sometimes several times a week. Workers have to take an involuntary break. The printing company has no generator of its own and must wait till the power comes back on. That can't happen to Eric Kaleya, who represents DEG, a German development institution in Kenya. His offices have their own generator, fine for emergencies, but hardly for constant use. As you can see, these are diesel-powered generators, so they're expensive, of course, and they produce CO2 emissions. 
They're basically just an additional expense for companies. Kostenbelastung für alle Unternehmen. Eric Kaleja helped secure credit from several European development banks for the private operators of the Ocaria 3 geothermal plant. The DEG itself provided a loan of 40 million US dollars, some 29 million euros. When it comes to funding infrastructure in particular, such as in the energy sector, you really need long-term financing. These loans run for 10 to 15 years, and the local banks just don't have the capacity to provide such funds. Many foreign banks are wary of investing in Kenya's future. The country seems too unstable to them. But of course, Kenyans have the same desires for a comfortable life as people anywhere in the world. The Gumba family, for example, is middle class. Mr. Gumba works in marketing. Mrs. Gumba is a teacher. They have four children. Daniela is the oldest. She studies at the university and can't imagine life without a computer. We're in the 21st century. Uh, we know this century we use the internet. We don't have to go to use the books. The internet gets everything that you need and it's fast. Kenyans are equally eager to see fast progress made in the field of geothermal power, an energy source that could supply all of East Africa, and at the same time, not endanger the wildlife.